I then went back to Nakimura and said, actually, we can do this, guys. And they came back, got their heads around it, and now they use it as part of their sales pitch uh, to show this type of part on this machine. Today, I'm at Shannon Precision Engineering in Ireland to get a masterclass of Jamie from ETG. But first, this part was actually, uh, Jamie was told this part couldn't be done in one hit. So, what came into your head when you were told this couldn't be done? Well, first of all, when I looked at that part, I was trying to think of a way that we could do this in one operation. And I took the inspiration from the technology from Nakamura and also the art of Japanese origami. Well, and actually, I'm going <laughs> to put that part down and grab this piece of paper and I will swap you that for your mic because you're actually going to sort of give us a demonstration of what you did in your office. So. Uh, sitting down at my office desk, I just picked up a piece of paper, uh, not accepting the fact that this couldn't be made on this machine. So I just started tearing some, uh, you know, doing a bit of origami, so tore some little strips down on the paper, uh, just to really try and get some sort of an impression of that particular part, so that I could see how that might look. So when I started rolling over the edges, and then I rolled over this side, I now had uh, two eccentric parts uh, so I could see and from there I was able to determine by literally moving it around in my hands thinking that can go into the main spindle that would then drop down with the sub spindle that can come back and then from there it would put each of the target points on center line so once I understood that in my head I then went back to Nakimura and said actually we can do this guys and they came back got their heads around it and now they use it as part of their sales pitch uh, to show this type of part on this machine. It's unique to Nakamura and to ETG. I love how just, uh, I'll give you that back and... Uh... That's, that's not as, it's not as uh, detailed as the last one, but you get the idea. No, but I love how just a bit of paper ripped and, <laughs> and bent over actually showed Nakamura that, wait a minute, we can make yeah. this part, we just have to be... Well, the engineering, you went, wait a minute, I'm not going to be beaten here. But, it can be done. But if you go back old school, how many parts are actually designed and manufactured around about drawing up on a... Everybody talks about drawing on a back end of a paper paper sketch or something. That's how everything starts. Oh, I did, I did once actually get a drawing on a cigarette packet, which <laughs> is definitely the old school way. Now, I'm just going to put this back down and grab the part. So... Obviously, this, this, this part is quite difficult because you've got the two spigots that aren't yeah. concentric. So, yeah. can you explain how this actually is made in this machine? Well, first of all, once we determined that we could actually handle this part inside the machine, one operation complete, uh, the next challenge actually was down to the work holding because the work holding was also fundamental to the process. So, if we didn't get good clamping and good repeatability, then this wasn't going to work, regardless of whether the machine could do it or not. So once we had that concept uh, designed, we went to the manufacturers, tool uh, work holding manufacturers, uh, and they came up. So what we have on the left spindle is we have an off-centric, uh, we have a, an offset chuck, three jaw chuck with hard gripper jaws, uh, and the jaws have been designed so the part sits off center. So as you can see uh, from the video, uh, you have the main spigot is now sitting on center line. But isn't as well, because obviously these, these actually come from castings as well. And yeah. We all know castings aren't exactly accurate, but you actually came up with, a, with another idea to help with that as well. Yeah, so inside the jaws, uh, each jaws has two uh, inserts, two teeth inserts, and they're both independent and they rock. So basically what's happening is because there are inconsistencies around the castings, uh, because of that slight rocking motion within the teeth of the jaws, we're able to clamp six point of contact evenly every time we clamp. You actually had some more challenges as well because yeah. you've got this groove which is obviously because of the spigot you've got to get right down there so yeah. how how did you how did you accomplish that with having this in the way well a lot of that comes down to the tooling again so we had to do a bit of work on the design uh, we had a couple of trial and errors to make sure because obviously what you've got there is the overhang so what we came up with is uh, you know tools sitting into a small holder which is then back into the driven tool um, but the holder takes up the, the bulk, if you like, of the tool itself. Um, and it's designed that we can get as close to the shaft that we need to, to create this uh, form inside using a standard 8mm end mill. And because you're using a tool holder, obviously you've got 
the rigidity of the tool so you're not having to slow it right down. You've still got quite a good cycle time. Yeah. Because they were, they were making this part on three machines before, which, yeah. let's be honest, when they're using a, a, a full spindle, they can use as much power as they want. Exactly, so, yeah. And with only having driven tooling and you're down at a, a smaller collet, so having yeah. that holder just allows you to keep, yeah. um, it just allows you to, to keep the pressure on, to keep the cycle yeah. time down. Well, the, the, good, the benefit of it as well is because we were able to do this in one operation and all the turn-ins, synchronized, transfer to the sub-spindle, um, the, although the milling tool cycle time was important, it wasn't as important as on the, on the traditional process. Um, because we'd saved times in other areas, um, you know, as an overall, we've saved over 50% cycle time on this part alone. Which is, well, that's brilliant, yeah. isn't it? and it's obviously, and it also, um, I was speaking to to um, one of the guys that every time this machine stops, they get a complete part. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because what we've had to do then on the sub spindle, because of the offset, because of the ability of the X axis on the sub spindle that it has its own axis, we were able to move the sub spindle down to a position. Uh, again, it came down to specialised design on the sub spindle clamping system and we basically picked the part up offset. So when we transferred it to the subspindle and we brought the x-axis back to zero, then we had the second operation spigot was now running on centerline. So we were able then to do a full operation, transfer eccentrically to the subspindle, and now we're completing this, this part, one operation, one hit. Um, the other benefit that we had is, obviously with the technology in Nakamura, um, we had the option of the superimposed or synchronized machining. Again, that's all based around improving cycle times. Now, I'm glad you mentioned this because we spoke about this a little earlier. And I think sometimes people think of the superimpose and think, you need a, you need a, you need a cam software, it's, it's really difficult to program, but no. it's not actually that difficult using this software, is it? Which is really great. So I, can you explain how that works? Yes. Well, basically what happens is with the software itself, it's, a, it's obviously Nakamura's own software. So you just program the main spindle and the sub spindle as if you would normally do independently any other time. If you want to use the superimpose, there's just an option on the page. There's a couple of parameters you have to fill in. And once you press superimposed, the system is intelligent enough and it works out the tool paths and the new cycle uh, for the upper turret to work on the left spindle. And at the same time, the sub spindle is tracking the upper turret on the right, sand, uh, right hand side and so this gives you then independent uh, uh, tooling paths, um, uh, basically using the left side and the right side of the turret. Which is great because obviously, I, and don't get me wrong, I thought the exact same when we spoke earlier. I was like, how, how do you program both spindles to yeah. run together? So having that software just really helps. So yeah. um, I just think it's such a such a great program you've done because this was all done as a turnkey project. Yeah. So we did this as a turnkey and ETG uh, base in Wellsbourne. So our engineers basically once we got the concept, they sat back at base um, and literally we proved out the parts, proved out the process. Um, the other cycle time saving on this because of the lower turret, uh, this is a fixed head on the lower set, uh, left hand side. Um, we were able to do the synchronized machining. Um, so again, to optimize the actual cycle time. Um, we had the option to use the, uh, um, the superimposed and also in conjunction with the uh, synchronized. So that means if we're tracking on the top turret, if we then want to come down and do independent machining, we can use the lower turret and the subspindle will actually work independently on the lower turret. So for us, it gave us the best cycle time solution. So it's not just about the cutting time, um, the actual machine itself gave us with the the technology that's built into it, it gave us the cycle time that we're at today. Obviously, at where we are today at Shannon Precision Engineering, they were really starting to struggle with the quantities they needed to produce. And I just, I just love how old school engineering yeah. has, has sort of saved the day. So for, for the viewers that are watching who may have a similar sort of problem, how can they get in contact with you to see if you can help them? Basically, all they need to do is just contact us through our website, etgisland.ide, or if they just want to come back to salesisland at engetechgroup.com, um, just put their inquiry in. Um, you know, all our numbers are on the website, so they want to give us a call. We have engineers in Ireland. We have service engineers. Um, we can come, sit down, talk to your guys, um, sit down with you, and come out with a, with a structure and a plan.